Hi, my name is Jim Trainer, and I'll be presenting on functions, homomorphisms, and isomorphisms. So our goals for this talk are to be able to show what a function is, what a homomorphism is, and what an isomorphism is, and also to be able to prove that two groups are either isomorphic or homomorphic. So as you saw definitions for a function that maps from one set S to another set T, if that function is onto, that means that every element in T is mapped to by some element S. If it's one-to-one -one or injective, that means that that no two elements in S map to the same element in T. And for bijective, and if that have a which is bijective, that means that it's both one, two, one, and on two. So our first definition is for a function. And this is a rule or set of rules that takes elements from one set or group in one set or group S and translates it to elements in another set or group T. So in a well defined mapping, this also means that no two elements that no two elements in the second group are mapped to by the same element. So you can't flip, you have to take one element and plug it into a function and get two different elements. That would make sense. So some examples, when going from integers to themselves, if an example of a function would be x, f of x equals x plus 5. Any element in z is going to map to some element in z. From q to q, you have f of x equals x plus 3. You can take any rational number q, divide by 3, you'll get another rational number. A non-example for going from real numbers to themselves would be f of x equals plus or minus square root of x. So in this case, an example, if you plug in four in this equation, you could get either two or negative two. So it would not be a well-defined mapping. Now a homomorphism is a special kind of mapping where when you plug in it, when you go from one group to another, it preserves the operation between those two groups. Meaning that if you have two groups, g, g under addition and h under multiplication, and you have two elements x and y in g. If f of x is homomorphic, that means that f of x plus y equals f of x times f of y. So an example of that would be from going from z to z3, f of x equals x mod 3. Now take any integer, integer x, put it down to, mod th to what it is in mod 3, and there'll be some elements in, f in z3. And since they're all integers, operations because that will either integers or operate like integers in C3, the operations will be preserved since it's just addition no matter what, between, it, between integers no matter what. A non-example would be f from z under addition to z under multiplication for f of x equals x plus 1. It does translate all of z, but if you take, say, elements 3 and 4, translate them in, tra combine them in z, you get 7. f of 7 is equal 8. But if you combine them but if you translate them first, you get f of 3 is 4, f of 4 is 5, and then 4 times 5 is 20, which is not equal to 8, obviously. So operation is not preserved, so it's not homomorphic. Then you have isomorphism, which is a special case of homomorphism. So in addition to operation preserving, the function is also going to be one-to-one -one and onto, or bijective. An example of that would be f from z6 under addition to z7 minus 0 on a where f of x equals 3 to the x. Now, each element maps to some distinct element. Is that some distinct element? No element in second group is not mapped to, and it is and, does, and our function translates addition into multiplication. So we have all the requirements for an for isomorphism. A non-example would be z6 under addition to z7 under addition, where f of x is just x. It is one to one, and it is operation preserving, but it's not onto because it would never, nothing will ever translate to the element seven in Z seven. It is important to note here that if two finite groups are of the same size, then saying that it's either up one to one or onto is also saying it's the other. You can't have a group that's the same size and one to one, but not onto, or up onto but not one to one. But if they're not the same size, it's also important to note that they can never be isomorphic unless they're both infinite in size, because infinity is weird that way. Okay, so how to prove a homomorphism or isomorphism. First, you need to find a mapping between the two groups that is well-defined. That is, everything translates all the elements of the first group to something in the second. Then you have to show that it's formed to, that preserves operations for a homomorphism. And then if you're going on to prove isomorphism, you have to show that it's both one-to-one -one and onto. So let's take an example of the first what I showed earlier, z6 under addition to z7 under multiplication. So first you have to show that it's a well-defined mapping so that everything in z6 matches something in z7 minus 0. 
And from the table here, you can see that it does, in fact, do that. 0 maps to 1, 1 maps to 3, 2, two 3 to the 2 is 9, mod 3 is going to be 2, mod 7 is 2, 3 goes to 6, 4 to 4, back 5. So that means it is well defined. Now to prove its homomorphism, we have to show that it's operation preserving. So you take some two elements in Z6, A and B, put them into the function. You get f of A times f of B equals 3 to the A times 3 to the B. And by properties of exponents, that is equal to 3 to the A plus B. And then that is going to be equal to f of A plus B. So that means that our mapping is operation preserving, which means it is a homomorphism. Two groups are homomorphic. It's all also just to show that these two groups are isomorphism, isomorphic. So look at our table from earlier. You can see that every element in the second group has something that maps to it, so it's an onto mapping. And then no two elements in the input map to the, map to the same element in the output, so it is one to one. And since it's one to one, to one and onto, that means it's bijective, which means our mapping is an isomorphism. Is an isomorphism. And something else to note is that isom being isomorphic is transitive. So if you have two groups, A and B, that are isomorphic, and two other groups, B and C, that are isomorphic, that means that A and C are isomorphic. You can do this by showing phase and composition of mapping. Since the function that maps A to B is both one to one and onto, and the function that maps B to C is one to one and onto, that means that if you combine the mappings, you'll get a mapping that takes any element of A, translates it into an element of B, and from there to an element of C, in a way that is both one, that will reach every element in C, and no two elements in A will reach the same element. And I'd be happy to take more questions now. <laughs>